I'm Rania again, <laughs> and um, I work uh, in Yala for almost more than one year, and uh, I mainly work for Eloa, the Young Leaders Online Academy, that you personally take very significant part of it, and we would like also if you can share this here, what, what role exactly you take in it. I'm uh, integrated on the uh, gender equality issue. And, yes. uh, and which is our topic for today, or our subject for this uh, part. Right. And we would like to hear from you what you have to tell us. And after that, we have some questions to ask you to, to discuss. With okay. Us. You know, I can say that something really struck me this morning when I was reviewing, uh, I was reviewing the material. And one of the things that I was uh, reviewing was the um, United Nations 1325 and 1828. And in reading these um, gender armed conflict and international humanitarian law um, rulings through the United Nations, uh, which considers uh, the um, you know the experience of women in sexual violence and rape, and starts to consider the diverse ways in which women participate in armed conflict. One of the things that I started to consider, and one of the things that I think that we at this peace activists to really consider is that when there is Rape. When there is in fact um, group rape, when there is in fact violence against women, there is also profound violence against men. And we don't really think about this because in society, this kind of um, misled um, behavior in the male society, this kind of um, inappropriate education about uh, male behavior that leads men to sexual violence also leaves men with a profound sense of shame, and a profound sense of continued inappropriate behavior. And it never allows men to get off of the needing to make this behavior or correct. Part of what we could create online is a place where men have um, a peace and reconciliation. I feel that we could educate men in a way where they would be able to make corporate pro progress and we could, have, because we are looking for equality and we're looking for resolution. Yeah, we actually said that we we have our um, uh, draft of uh, gender equality principles, and we already really uh, emphasized this point that uh, gender equality isn't really a woman's issue. So yeah. we totally, definitely agree with you. And do you think that here in the Middle East, it's really uh, should we start by emphasizing this because we still have lots of uh, struggle to do? When we don't, well, most of the countries don't even have basic uh, needs. And how? What your message to the women in the Middle East? I do you think? I do think if you want violence against women to stop, you have to go to the place that violence is coming from, and educate that. I think it doesn't stop by saying you have to stop. And here's what I want. Yeah. I don't think you can can ask for something from people who don't have the education and the compassion given to them to know how to stop it. I think if you want something to stop, you have to be the example which from which you want to see growth. Yeah. We and actually, I think you have to be it to get it. Yeah, we as the Yala movement, we, we do that. For example, our, so, lead, our leadership group is 60 women, 60 men, and we all the time do that in our, as Yala. 
and we demand and we we part, we make campaigns for women issues. But the problem here is that we talk about the women in the region. Uh, what your suggestion for those women? How should they start out? Well, you as an actress and demand is too intense of a behavior. You have to be able to be giving and then you have to be able to be demonstrating the need from an educated point of view. Demanding is a violent action. You have to be able to be giving with compassion to be able to receive with compassion. That's a peaceful action. Obviously, if you're showing men that you understand this dilemma, then you can show the dilemma of women. Yala isn't about creating a revolution. Yala is about creating a peaceful revolution, which is a different position. It's a position from compassion and education. So I'm Samia from Tunisia, if you don't remember me. So I couldn't agree more with yeah. you. Uh, you've been saying that uh, women, well, gender equality is not only a woman issue. And when you were, you were talking about a new way to to um, bring men and to involve them, and in how in how draft that we can send you if you if you accept, we we can uh, we have this idea of creating campaign online, a traditional campaign on traditional media to educate men and women. Uh, to yes. change these behaviors. Um, I want to ask you uh, how could culture and heart can promote uh, gender equality? Which tools can we use on heart and culture to, to promote this issue? The most important thing that you can do is education and education of young women, education of adolescent women. And they have to understand their pride about their bodies and themselves and their self-empowerment in terms of education, that their mind and their opinions and their thoughts about the world are valuable. That the, that the basic feminine aspects of themselves, their ability to be compassionate, their ability to have expansive and creative thought, basic feminine principles are powerful. I think one of the things that we've been wanting to ask, I mean, You've been, um, and you are deeply involved with YALA um, as, as one of the many causes that you're involved in. Um, and we are really, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking as, as a man, um, speaking on gender equality from that same sort of um, lesson and learning that you're talking about. Um, we want to find concrete ways to act on this issue and, and we'd really, really love to have you involved in, in those actions as, as well be beyond the capacity that you're already involved in. Traditions which sometimes are helpful and sometimes are not, so we need to shed some light on the way to make more healthful look at creating healthful patterns and restraint on inappropriate traditional um, behaviors, so that you can use medical and logical, um, educated people from the colleges that you participate with to create real, um, streamlined, factual, documented assessments of what is helpful and what is not, so that people can say, you know what, it might be better if, and have some programming, and have some things so that people can ask questions, have concrete answers. A key thing to really remember is that a lot of violence comes simply from insecurity, simply from fear. And that if you can answer questions, really, really, I know this sounds almost too simple, but if you can answer basic questions, basic questions about self, the body, development through the adolescent and teenage and young 20s years, you will resolve a lot of conflict. So just keep in your mind that violence generally begins in the smallest things. Yeah. And don't be afraid to be simple, simple, simple.
I wanted to ask you, how did you come about YALA? You have so many initiatives that you're involved with. Why YALA? Well, originally, um, I, this is something that I had only wanted to work in in, in terms of um, peace ambassador in the Middle East. And um, when I went to Davos, to the World Economic Forum, uh, there were, I went from conference to conference to conference, and on stage there were like six men, various presidents of various countries, and Bill Gates and the Chancellor from England, and the the president of Tunisia was talking about the need for bed nets, and I remember they were two dollars for a bed net, and these children were dying every day from malaria, and how difficult it was, and. Um, this is just was a forum, an open conference, and these people were talking and talking and talking, and it was just driving me crazy. <laughs> and at the end, I, I, I said, would you like to talk? And I stood up and I said, yeah, this room is people spent so much money to come for the weekend. Why don't we just give them the thing? <laughs> and they told me to sit down. And I said, no. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're like, Miss Stone, sit down. No, I'm not sitting down. I'll give you 10000 Who else will give him money? And I kept talking, and CNN put the cameras on me. And finally, so many people stood up in the room, and we raised, I don't know, a million dollars or something. And then they, Red Cross gave matching donations, and we ended up making an enormous impact on malaria in Tunisia. And eventually, Bill Gates started the foundation. And I started working with the uh, Women's Economic Forum and lecturing and lecturing with um, adult students in mixed Palestinian, Israeli, black women, Palestinians, and families. Because it's my belief that this interaction between Palestine and Israel must must the conflict has to stop. You have to stop the conflicts, not to incite great conflict and violence inside. And it's so, so important that you that there's becomes unity. For, first of all, for this to stop inviting further violence. There's also just in the proximity such power in uniting these two countries. There's in the region, the politicians have quite have lost hope, both on this side, in Israel, and in, in, in the Palestinians. And I think in the region, the possibility to make change. Why do you believe that Yala can do it? Well, because, you know, not to be offensive, but, you know, the politicians are growing older. They're getting fatigued from the years of the fight. And Yala, because it's young and young people understand that we have reached the paradigm shift that people love each other differently now we can say sex love we can love different people of different religions different races we can love different ages we can love someone older someone younger someone different someone we can actually live in the same household with someone who has different beliefs and respect those different beliefs because there's been a paradigm shift in the world and older people older politicians are stuck they're stuck in in the fatigue and the burden of carrying so much heartache and loss and with great great respect, because I understand that from my work with AIDS, you know, in my time with AIDS, we've lost 35 million people. I'm just, now that we're having a cure, we're just taking off the blanket of that great loss. I, I have great co compassion and great camaraderie and great understanding of what it means to carry such a weight of loss. I understand how hard it is, but I also understand that the future is embracing that the paradigm shift has occurred. It's not that it's going to occur, that it might occur, that it will occur. The oneness, universal oneness, has happened. The days of the old dude fighting and carrying a gun on his belt 
into these meetings where two guys sit around in front of a fireplace and talk about peace. That's just bullshit and it's over. <laughs> Peace are these people doing it. They're doing it. They're online. They're educating. Universes of educating in peace. Peace are entire nation meeting in the square, standing in unity, saying we are falling this nation that will not give us peace, that is giving us oppression. We are falling this nation in a peaceful demonstration. We will not have this any longer. You're done. We are changing this entire governmental system to a new democracy or to a new governmental regime because we stand in the new paradigm shift where we will be loving, we will be peaceful, we will be educated, women will have a voice, couples will be together, people will be loved, heterosexuals, homosexuals, people will be able to be who they genuinely are and be the fullest of their beingness. People do not want to live in a state of violence. They want to live in a state of unity, a state of embracing each other, the hopeless of who they are. And they want to do it in peace. Last question. We are all looking forward for the visit of President Obama in uh, Israel and in the Palestinian Authority. Um, the White House, the White House, has made it clear not to raise any expectations, not to hope for big change. What do you think this visit can bring about? Do you believe that President Obama will be the person to bring change to the region? My experience of observing President Obama in these years of his presidency is that he is not a reactive person, he is a responsive person. And that one of the things that we can learn and one of the things that we can exemplify in mirroring his behavior is not to react, but to think and respond. That even behavior, that thoughtful even behavior is very, very key in fulfilling the truth of what we would like to have happen. It allows us to think and do the right action and then to follow it through to its completion. Will change happen in an instant? No. It's the preparation for change that we are doing now. Eventually, change will happen in an instant. Right now, we are laying the ground the change that will eventually happen in an instant. It's clear that President Obama has a great understanding of the need for unity in the Middle East. It's clear that your efforts are relevant and profound.